Hey guys, welcome to The Sounding Mind, the loud inside voice that speaks the truth and nothing but the truth to power. This is the channel that focuses on exposing the hypocrisy of the left agenda. Kevin O'Leary calls AOC great at killing jobs. New York uninvestable feud erupts. Shark Tank star Kevin O'Leary attacks. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez for killing jobs. Ocasio-Cortez mocked on Twitter for bragging about killing thousands of Amazon jobs. Resign in disgrace. One person on Twitter observed, This type of grift is exactly what's wrong with Washington. We are about to unpack it all here on The Sounding Mind, with clips of this AOC lefties clown on what really is going on here and all the hidden agenda and schematics of the Democrats. Now, let's get on with it. Has Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez been updated? You guys are aware of the situation, right? If Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez ever receives criticism, especially from the general public, it usually indicates that she has experienced a very major bodily trauma. Either that or the person criticizing her is merely secretly interested in dating her. But on a more serious note, Toronto businessman and Shark Tank investor Kevin O'Leary recently appeared on CNN to discuss liberal ideas and, more especially, liberal communities. Furthermore, as is well known, Mr. Wonderful doesn't particularly enjoy skirting delicate themes. He would much rather state the obvious. And, of course, we are aware of what occurs when you speak the truth. On CNN, the panel stops responding when you tell the truth. On CNN, Kevin O'Leary attacked liberal policies and specifically attacked Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, shocking the network panel. Let me demonstrate what occurred to you in detail and then we can discuss why Kevin O'Leary is correct. Roll the tape. We have some things to get into. All right, everyone, check this clip over here. I don't put companies here in New York anymore or in Massachusetts or in New Jersey or in California. Those states are uninvestable. The policy here is insane. The taxes are too high. We put them in Fargo, North Dakota, mm. because 40% of the people work elsewhere, including Boston. So I was, you know, of a, a bit of a debate with Elizabeth Warren about this, but I say, look, Senator, we've got to move the companies out of your state because you're not investable anymore. You're punishing people if they're successful. You overtax them. You hit them with a super tax. New Jersey, what a mess. New York, uninvestable. Thousands of jobs coming out of that. I mean, that is, that's New York, uninvestable. Sorry, don't shoot the messenger, just telling you the way it is. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's it, uninvestable. Some pushback from our, our elected officials in New York I on that. I was just going to say Kathy Hochul. Yeah. But I'll debate it, them any time of the day you want. Uh, any, we would love to set that up. AOC, that. she's great at killing jobs. She kills jobs by the thousands. You know, another New Jersey problem. Where did Amazon take their jobs? They took them away from her. She threatened to sue them if they created jobs. I mean, this is a reality. This is a reality that the business... There's a little more to it, but let's not relitigate well, that. Well, you know, sorry, I'm just telling the truth. He's, he's saying what a lot of people are saying, especially what happened with that Amazon thing here in New York. Kevin O'Leary is just one investor, but he speaks for many others. At some point, the lack of investment dollars is going to have a significant negative impact on those who live in those states. Hence, the citizen movement so far is just the tip of the iceberg down the road from now. You see, CNN still has work to do, not even close, I mean. But I must confess that things have improved with the new ownership group. The fact that Kevin O'Leary is a well-known conservative and, more crucially, that he speaks openly and without any restraint is a lethal combination that I doubt the old CNN would have permitted. When your net worth is in the hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars, and you are not bound to a particular goal— that frequently occurs. Kevin O'Leary is not a paid shill for any company, so of course, he starts off strong as usual. The CNN morning panel was just fantastic. Knowing that a powerful person like Kevin O'Leary can completely alter the narrative and alter people's viewpoint in front of millions of viewers while live on television gives me a special kind of pleasure. This video has already received tens of millions of views after being shared online. And hopefully people are listening, because Kevin O'Leary is 100% correct in what he is saying. Our elected representatives would likely have a different viewpoint, says CNN's Caitlin Collins in response. Yes, they are lawmakers who represent New York, of course. Will they concur with Kevin O'Leary that their policies have made New York City unattractive to investors? Not exactly a strong case. The truth is that the information discussed in this article is largely accessible, evident, and plain. 
You only need to consider fundamental trends. Let's look at migration trends first, I mean. The nation's highest net negative immigration rates are found in states like California and New York. In other words, people are leaving the state. Of course, what does that mean in terms of virtue? People are likely taking their enterprises with them if they are emigrating from New York and California, respectively. I recently showed this section to you guys as well. I honestly feel no pity for New York and these blue states. They voted for this, and now they are reaping the benefits. New York, California, New Jersey, Massachusetts are all feeling the budget deficits from the exodus of taxpaying residents that have moved. Now they will tax those who are left and fully bankrupt those states. Well, they voted for it. A new story covering all of the finance firms leaving New York City and leaving Wall Street for the beautiful beaches of Miami. Look, there's a thousand people a day moving into Florida, and the last statistics I saw, 400 of them per day are from uh, New York. And it's just a sad tale of how bad governance uh, chases people away. People are voting with their feet. I mean, you know, one thing to understand is Florida and New York roughly have about the same population, but Florida's state budget is half, half of that of New York. So how we manage to to get along, serve our constituents, have a great state that businesses and families grow in uh, without taxing them to death is something that I think Cuomo should take a hard look at. And I claim that they are heading to Miami's stunning beaches from Wall Street. Nevertheless, in reality, people are relocating to Florida for its economic policies, not for its culture, nightlife, or beaches on the Gulf of Mexico, which Florida leads the nation in terms of economic freedom. It pretty much makes no sense. Every single indicator suggests that conservative policies are at work in Democrat policies and that these policies are causing the devastation and collapse of significant metropolitan areas. Let's look at real estate as an example. It's a different, fascinating metric. You know, cities like New York City and San Francisco haven't experienced the same kind of surge in the previous two years as the cost of housing has totally skyrocketed once more. In fact, the most recent statistic identifies San Francisco in particular as one of the regions experiencing the largest decreases in real estate prices nationwide. And I'm certain that some leftists will use that as an opportunity to make a horribly false argument. In San Francisco, though, housing is getting more inexpensive. The liberal agenda is effective. No, housing costs are still prohibitively high. There is still a severe supply shortage. The main issue now is that no one wants to relocate to San Francisco. So hundreds of millions of dollars worth of home equity have been destroyed as a result of the demand declining so drastically. These prosperous blue metropolitan areas with healthy finances aren't actually so prosperous. You could even say that they are collapsing. And because of policy, they are crumbling. Not just large corporations are being taxed out of existence. Also, it must deal with all of these onerous regulations. Little businesses are affected as well as major businesses. According to the migration patterns I already described, people are emigrating and stealing enterprises with them. Their tax funds are being taken with them. In addition to onerous regulations and exorbitant tax bills, it is challenging to manage a business when local officials fail to uphold the law. This right here is one of the craziest headlines so far of 2023. I mean, this is crazier than last year's 17 Walgreens shutting down in Los Angeles and across California. Walmart to shutter Portland locations just months after CEO's warnings on crime. Walmart announced it is permanently closing all of its locations in Portland, Oregon, over financial reasons. We have nearly 5,000 stores across the U.S., and unfortunately, some do not meet our financial expectations, Walmart said in its announcement, according to KPTV. While our underlying business is strong, these specific stores haven't performed as well as we hoped. Both Walmart locations at Hayden Meadows and Eastport Plaza will officially close on March 24th. Stores close when they don't make a decent margin for a profit. Walmart is a for-profit business. When losses at specific locations become the norm, it's time to close the locations. All customers of Walmart at every location pay for these losses from shoplifting in the form of higher prices. Crime and homelessness should be major factors in raiding municipal bonds today. Who would have thought even ten years ago that so many metropolitan areas would be in such decline? 
A couple of months ago, the CEO of Walmart went publicly on the record, claiming that theft is historically high and it's becoming a serious issue. Here is a headline from the Daily Mail. Walmart CEO warns that retail giant could hike prices or shut down some stores if historically high thefts at the chain continue and prosecutors' lax approach to dealing with criminals is not corrected. I've spoken with other retailers who have said <laughs> this is a, a national issue, a state issue, a city-wide issue. Um, laws matter where, where these things aren't prosecuted. What's it mean to the bottom line? What would you like to see uh, people in Washington and elsewhere do about it? Yeah, um, theft is an issue. It's higher than what has historically been. And we've got safety measures, security measures that we put in place by store location. I think local law enforcement being staffed and being good, a good partner is, is part of that equation. And that's normally how we approach it. But there have been rules that have been changed that make it not something that the police are going to pro prosecute or that the, the criminals won't be prosecuted below certain levels. Does that matter? If that's not corrected over time, prices will be higher right. and or stores will close. Soon after, all of the locations in Portland, Oregon are formally closed. Coincidence? I disagree. Because of good faith, all the criminality that these Democratic politicians are presenting as a beautiful liberal utopia will simply vanish. According to Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, society will become a utopian paradise with white picket fences if you defund the police and stop prosecuting and persecuting minorities who are merely attempting to steal bread to feed their families. Ten out of ten times, every politician who consistently promotes this absurd, illogical viewpoint and policy results in a worsening of all the existing issues— making neighborhoods and cities less safe and the populace less prosperous. Here is yet another instance of why Kevin O'Leary is correct. These cities are therefore uninvestable. Racial equality is actually being hampered by a significant problem. For instance, Democrats claim that demonizing white people is the best way to fix racial equality. That is the initial action. Defunding the police is the next stage since they are the ones preventing these communities from thriving. White, racist, Gestapo police forces. But the true problem is criminality. Business operations are not permitted in high crime areas. If crazed fentanyl and meth addicts and roaming bank of retail theft gangs are ransacking your business on a regular basis while the government does nothing in the name of more racial equality, you can't run a tiny retail store or even a big box retail store. Democrats tax the middle class into extinction, harming the same people they claim to be protecting and elevating. They make operating a firm challenging financially, and they make it even more difficult in terms of community policing and safety. And I'm aware that when it comes to the idea that Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez scared Amazon out of New York, people says that Amazon is a bad corporation, and they weren't exactly nice jobs. You know what, though? Still, they are jobs. It would have given the neighborhood money and prosperity. It would have increased tax revenue for the government. But because liberals practice virtue signaling and demonize big business and billionaires, all the jobs and financial gain just moved elsewhere. In other words, Kevin O'Leary is 100% accurate. That's all I got for you guys today. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to hit a like and possibly subscribe to the channel. I'm going to get out of here now. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.